What's up, YouTube? My name is Chihiro. Today we'll be making the katsudon, a pork cutlet with eggs on top of rice. Now it sounds super simple, but it has plenty of what is called the umami flavor. Now this has been officially recognized as the fifth flavor after sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. First acknowledged by some random Japanese scientist like a hundred years ago, but you know, I don't really care. What we should care about is that this dish will have a lot of rich savory taste. We will achieve this by creating our own very simple dashi broth, which adds a a lot of harmony to the rest of our ingredients. Due to its affordability and just general awesomeness, this dish is one of Japan's top comfort foods, especially popular with defeated salarymen who needs a little pick-me-up every now and then. Well then, hajimeyo! We'll be using kombu and katsuobushi to create our broth. Make sure you don't scrub away the white powder on the kombu. In 500 milliliters of water, put in 10 grams of kombu. And just let it sit for about an hour. After that, heat it until it starts to boil, then take the kombu out of the pot. Now add 13 grams of katsuobushi into the pan and let it simmer for 3 minutes. Now pour the broth into a bowl, making sure you filter out all the katsuobushi. You'll get a nice golden broth. Have a taste to experience the umami flavor. Now we will prepare the rice. Put about 1.5 cups of rice into a bowl and use water to clean it. The water will start out murky but keep rinsing it out and repeating the process until the water becomes clear. This should be about good enough. Now filter out all the water and put the rice into your rice cooker. Now add about 2 cups of water, turn it on and we'll move on to our sauce. Now get a small skillet and add 75 milliliters of our dashi broth. 1 tablespoon of meeting, 2 tablespoon of soy sauce, and 1 tablespoon of sugar. Now get a quarter of an onion and thinly slice them, then add them to our skillet, making sure it's nice and even. Now simmer until the onions look slightly soft and transparent, then turn it off and now we'll prepare the meat. Now in terms of the actual pork, the loin or the tenderloin is most often used, but we'll use the shoulder this time. Now cut the sides of the meat and stab the surface with a fork, to make it more juicy and delicious. Now cover the meat with flour, making sure all sides are evenly distributed. Now crack one egg and add one teaspoon of oil to provide additional coating for the meat. Then mix it all up. Now put the egg mixture into a tray along with a tray of breadcrumbs. Now cover the meat with the egg mixture, which will allow the breadcrumbs to stick to it. Now put the meat onto the breadcrumbs tray, making sure all four sides are evenly covered. Now pour some frying oil into a pot. Now heat it to about 170 degrees. Throw some breadcrumbs in there, and then if it fries and then slowly spreads out, you're good to go. Now throw the meat into the pot, leaving it alone for about two minutes. It sounds so nice! So let's take a closer look. Ah! Then flip it over and cook the other side until it has a slightly golden color. And take it out and dry it on some paper towels. And just let it cool down for about 5 minutes. Make sure you take out some of the fallen breadcrumbs so that they don't stick to our meat. Now with the oil slightly hotter at, at about 180 degrees, put the meat back in. This time, put it in, put it out again and again, allowing additional moisture to dissipate. After a couple of thrusts, take it out of the pot and let it cool for about 3 minutes. Then cut it horizontally and until it looks kind of like this. Now get the sauce from earlier and reheat it on low heat. Now gently place the meat onto the sauce. Then crack open two eggs then mix them. But not completely, leaving some of the whites left. Now evenly pour about half of the egg mixture onto the sauce. Then close the lid and let it simmer for about 30 seconds on low heat. Then put the rest of the mixture in, close the lid, and turn off the heat, waiting for about 30 seconds. Put the rice from earlier into a bowl. And gently place the meat and the sauce into the bowl. That was not gentle at all. I need to fix this off camera. Now that was obviously delicious, but that's not why I just ate like a savage. Before I get into that, some of you may have noticed that I put up a poster of Babe the Gallant Pig. Now this was one of my favorite childhood movies. Basically it's about a pig that gets bought by some farmer to be eaten, but it turns out that this pig has this amazing ability to herd sheep more efficiently by just asking them nicely. This did not sit well with Rex, an alpha border collie who was the 
top sheep herder in all of the land who felt threatened by Babe's abilities. But Fly, Rex's wife, took on a mother figure for Babe, protecting him from Rex. In the end, Babe won some sheep herding contest and lived happily ever after. As a child, I thought, oh, what an inspirational tale. But I watched again recently. I figured out what was really going on. Babe just came out of nowhere and screwed up the entire livelihood of Rex a dedicated father and a provider for his family. He took his job, he took his wife. Am I projecting? He should have been eaten as originally planned. Now, every time I cook or eat pork, I'll think of Babe or his great grand pickles or whatever. I need a drink.